Studies from the Center for Problem-Orientated Policing show that stalking precedes an exceedingly high proportion of homicides. In these cases, the stalkers often know their victims. Advocate for Victims of Domestic Violence, Deirdre Keyes, is here to share her insight on stalking. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me, Katie. Now, you've been an advocate for victims of domestic violence for about nearly 20 years now. And That's kinda, correct. Over those years, you've developed this interest in stalking. Yes. Exactly how do people define stalking? Stalking is defined as repeated and unwanted behavior that would cause a reasonable person to feel fear. And the key piece is the fear that the victims feel. Um, you know, how concerned should we be about this issue of stalking? I think we should be very concerned. I, I look at stalking as uh, homicide prevention, that we really need to recognize this. 75% um, of women who are murdered by an intimate partner were stalked pr in the year prior to that murder. So that's definitely a concern. Now, 75%, um, mm -hmm. you know, that is a huge statistic. How do you, you know, work to help people realize the severity of stalking? Well, that's a really good question. I think that it is really important that advocacy uh, know and understand stalking and the, the nature and the behavior of it so that we can assist victims. But moreover, that victims come to understand that what's happening to them is stalking. And I think that's a key piece too. Okay. And now you're serving these victims um, of stalking, you know, and um, do you have a specific example that you've found of a person that has been stalked? Yeah, I think that um, the, ma the main thing to understand about stalking is that it primarily happens in intimate partner relationships. And I had a victim have, still a victim that I work with, her name is Sarah, who was trying to break up with her boyfriend and he wouldn't stop. Uh, trying to see her and then she ended the relationship and went to live with her mom and he called her 40 times an hour uh, he would drive by her house and he even went as far as um, plowing the snow in her driveway up against the garage door so that she couldn't leave and all of this can be defined as stalking oh my goodness well I I'm sure I'm sure that this you know um, constant contact is one of the key components of stalking yes you know um how does this constant contact affect the victim that's being stalked? Victims are very um, prone to high anxiety. Um, really, there isn't any downtime. It's very difficult to recover from stalking because it's always there. So that fear is really constant. Okay, and now, you know, stalking has been around forever, but we continue to get new technology, you know, that these stalkers can use. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe just explain a little bit how technology is affecting stalking. I think uh, cell phones primarily are a huge issue with stalking. You can um, track someone, GPS on a phone, um, and, and then the constant texts and uh, emails even through the smartphones and cell phones. Very difficult for victims because they can't really seem to get away from it. It's always there. And you were talking, you know, how Sarah's boyfriend, you know, continued to mm -hmm. call and text her. Mm -hmm. um, I guess, when should victims, you know, get other people involved, like call law enforcement? Mm. That's a good question. Um, law enforcement uh, want to hear from stalking victims. Um, it is a little bit difficult because usually when a victim will call, say for, um, say just for the phone calls, 40 phone calls in an hour, uh, law enforcement will generally not really see that as stalking yet. It will be one incident. So I think it's really important for victims to keep a record keep a log of what's going on with them, a written record, so that they can um, show law enforcement what's been going on with them. Okay, what are some other things that victims can do? Well, I think one of the main pieces that I really try to get across to stalking victims is to seek assistance from somebody who knows and has knowledge and understands the nature of stalking because it is very uh, dangerous and perhaps lethal. And there are things that the general public might advise that aren't necessarily safe. So it's really good for stalking victims to talk with somebody who has an understanding of stalking. And we actually um, have a link of another resource that they can go to. It's mm -hmm. a website, the National 
um, stalking website? Yeah, it's the National Center for Victims of Crime, uh, the Stalking Resource Center. There's a lot of really good information in there on defining the nature of stalking as well as how to keep safe. And the incident log is also on that website. Okay, and now you've been working with these victims for nearly 20 years mm -hmm. and you know just why do you have the interest? I, it's a passion for me. I really understand the nature of stalking and I really enjoy working with these victims and it's, it motivates me and it gets me up in the morning and it makes work go by fast. <laughs> um, you know, I guess just to touch really quickly, you know, is there any precautionary steps that people can take, you know, um, if they're potential victims of stalking? Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, we're going to talk more about that tonight, the Take Back the Night Rally. I do have uh, a list of four things that I want to share with people who come, and uh, so I'm going to save that for tonight. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, um, yeah, the Take Back the Night Rally, it's um, for victims of domestic violence, mm -hmm. and um, that'll be great for the, all the people that attend. Mm -hmm. So thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me.